Hey everyone, welcome to the Final Cut Show that never ends. Glad you could attend. Come inside as we take a look at, yes, it's a horror film. We're going to need a lot of them this year. How appropriate our first review of the new year is of Texas Chainsaw 3D, the direct sequel to the 1974 film, not a sequel to the remake, nor is it a remake of the sequel to the original film. No, this is a new sequel directly attached to the original film. Now we get the story of Heather Miller, who inherits a property, but she gets more than she bargains for from this big, beautiful mansion and property that she inherited, because it's on the outside of town of Newt, where the events of Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the original one, occurred just on the outskirts of town as well, where the Sawyer family did nasty, mean things to a girl many moons ago. Well, the town is still reeling from that, and when she inherited this house, she finds it comes along with an unexpected resident in the form of Leatherface. And we watch the chaos ensue from there. Plus, we learn so many things about the townsfolk, and uh, we just see the gore and the uh, ch chainsaw a flying. Okay? Now, <laughs> first off, uh, let me say that it, this, this movie had good intentions. You can tell it had good intentions. It opens with trying to connect it directly and playing out events that happened directly after the original, which I give them props for trying, okay? They, they try to capture the period, the, the, the house and the look, you know, you, you feel like it's a continuation of it until you get inside the house, but uh, <laughs> and, and, you know, so I like that they tried to connect it to that, plus they open the movie with some scenes from the original that are in 3D, so it's cool to see the original kind of cleaned up in 3D, so I, I, I kind of like that, how they tried to, you know, attach it like that. So I, I give them props there, though. It could have been written a lot better, and that's the only scenes you see these veteran actors that they try to get us folks who love the original hooked into, saying, oh, Bill Mosley and Gunnar Hansen are in there. Yeah, well, unfortunately... One of the actresses, Tiana Ramon, they, uh, uh, her butt gets more screen time than these veteran actors. Yes, that's right. The, the, uh, Alexandra Daddario plays Heather Miller, the girl who inherits the house. And, um... Uh, the camera and their friends come along with her and the way they directed things scenes with her it just her friend's butt was always in the frame i don't understand it i mean come on you know and it was noticeable because she had the red shorts which may have been an ode to the original texas chainsaw massacre unknown um you know and the, the uh, two-thirds of the film it was stupid it was bad okay I was sitting here going oh this is a train wreck but then you get to like the last 20 minutes of this film and suddenly the script it's like one of the writers woke up and go oh hey you know what we could do this I mean in the last half hour you get character arc in your main actress uh, main character you get you know depth and meat to the story of Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and you get some really interesting things that actually happen and are kind of cool to watch. Uh, so it was really weird that this first two-thirds of the film were really bad and then it kind of picked up. Plus, uh, they also use practical effects, which in a modern horror film, it, you, it's impressive. Okay, now I'm sure there's some CGI in there that was just done really well, but for the most part, it was great to see practical gore effects used for this film, and it definitely uh, was trying to keep the heart of the original film in mind. And uh, there were some shots that were done similar to the original film as well. Some wider shots, some interesting shots without a soundtrack. Uh, there's a great shot with the van later on. I loved it where Leatherface is going. Yeah. They did really well there. So there are bits and pieces that are done really well. And the last third of the film really saved us from being a crap fest, to be sure. Now, I'm not saying it's still not have its really bad parts. For instance, the really, really, really stupid, dumb things these kids do. I mean, I know we got stupid people uh, in, in 80s horror slasher in some 70s, but I mean, they do something really stupid. They pick up a hitchhiker who travels with them to this big, huge mansion that she inherited, and they do the stupidest thing that anybody could ever do and even think of. I mean, these these kids, I'm surprised they remembered to breathe. Maybe it was, you know, all the butt shots that uh, was distracting them. I don't know, but they do do this really stupid thing that just made me go, huh? It tries. It really tries. But I still only had to give it two stubs. Okay, Texas Chainsaw, two stubs. The three distraction doesn't add squat to this outside of making it seem like a cheesy 80s 3D film, which I don't know if they were trying to go for that because it had a little more serious 
tone to it than that, especially near the end. So I don't think that was intentional, but it definitely had that feeling of Jaws 3D as far as the effects for 3D go. Um, and oh, one final note, the main actor, there's a scene near the end, I'm not going to spoil it too much, but the girl, it's rated R, which is great because of the gore. But it's not for the TNA folks. So if you're looking, at what, thinking it's going to hit all three Bs, you, no, it, it doesn't because uh, <laughs> this girl, she has this shirt. And I'm telling you, a hurricane could not blow this thing open any more than right here. I mean, this shirt stays. It's loose fitting. You would think naturally it would end up with the way she's, you know, moving around and everything. Nope, that sucker stayed right there. So girls, if you can find out what shirt she wore, you may want it because that thing is never coming off. So... <laughs> Uh, but uh, you get the point. It's worth a rental, maybe a matinee, you know, if you're interested. The, uh, yeah, it's just too many things that don't add up in the film, though, to really make it that decent sequel that it was trying to be. It just ends up being this mediocre, unpolished film that could have probably used a little more work and been a lot better. And that'll about do it for us here at the Final Cut. Till next time, folks, keep